Mini YouTube as well. Obviously, this is the last of that toy view of 2020 as this year comes to an end. It's been a horrible year, atrocious year, and uh, it's also been diabolical. Okay, so obviously 2020 has been the absolute pit hole of all years of history of history itself. And I gotta tell you what, it has been really, really unprecedented those times. And yes, it's one of these years where at first glance I think this is gonna be as lavish as 2019, but sadly it's not though. But 2020 wasn't always bad for me because, well, obviously, um, in my opinion, I would literally say 2020 has done a better job than 2018 and 2019 tied together because, well, I feel like, yes, the Ash Ketchum logo has been around for a long time and I've used the other flip flap logos to be more of what a logo minifigure would look like though. But anyways, all flip flap products here are uh, Generation 118 and 19 toys, obviously, and uh, they've got the Ash Ketchum logos on the front though, but um, yes. Um, I might just start with you now because, well, obviously 2020 has been a very hard year because of COVID and all the other guff and stuff like that, the, the bushfires in Australia and, well, the US protests and all the other stuff which has been completely and utterly devastating throughout the rest of the whole entire planet, being Earth where we live in though. Anyways, uh, we've got two flip-up origami products which are based on tropical primates, obviously and three flapping bird products and one of them is of course a tropical theme so anyways I'm just gonna go ahead and take a look at what we've got uh, I don't know what I might start with but I might probably start with this product here remember I did the five pack of chimpanzees now we've got a, a horde of twelve chimpanzees this is a twelve pack of chimpanzees and it also comes in two different color variations there's a brown one which is interesting because I can see them on the artwork here Thank you enough, I forgot to erase some of the lines there. <laughs> Bananas not included, yay! <laughs> As you can see this chimpanzee is basically holding a freaking banana though, because we all know monkeys love bananas. All these bloody years that we all know about them of course. Fifteen pounds ninety five or five pence away from sixteen pounds. I've got a cold lingering still, so I really do apologize for that one, eh? Uh but anyways, <laughs> look at that chimpanzee is freaking Petrified because he's endangered, and now uh, we've got a chimpanzee who is literally just, you know, well, basically feeling a lot more melancholy because, well, he's basically watching himself. Uh, he's basically watching, no, sorry, what was I saying? He's actually watching himself with the other chimp, just basically being a lot more petrified for the fact is, once again, he's endangered like all of the rest of the other chimps that live in Africa. <coughs> or in the wild, of course. And like the other five pack that I did, these guys can stand in either two to four legs here. Right, I'm just going to go ahead and unpack this. Ooh, that was very really quick here. Anyways, I'm just going to show you what they look like though. There's two different colour variations here. Very simple. Very, very nice. I love the fact you've got a little chimpanzee on the letter O. The big O next to the big red coronavirus. <laughs> I don't know if COVID's getting a lot more sensitive these days on YouTube because, well, it's basically a disease that no one really wants to talk about because it's going to ruin people's lives though this year day. But anyways, there's two different colour variations though. There's one which is black and the other one which is brown. Now I've got a funny feeling whenever I look at these models, um, their eyes are a lot more darker when, um, than the other model that I did though back in, um, well, in that pre-Christmas video. Um, sadly, um, that video took a long, long time to upload though because, well, actually it was a week long because obviously um, I had to make four more tropical animal themed products. I've got the cassowaries, uh, the monster lizards, and the um, the cockatoos just mobbing a black height, if I remember though. And uh, these guys, uh, obviously, they can stand by piddly or quadruply, which is interesting now. Very, very nice to see them, of course. Sadly, they don't have lots of singing photo, but um, nevertheless, these guys look very, very nice. Perfect for a tropical jungle scenery thing, which is really, really good, though. And I gotta tell you, this is really amazing. I love the fact that these toys are nicely, lavishly detailed. Although, this one here looks like his cheeks gone a bit sooty, though. Oh my god, looks like it's got a bit of a very weird blending colour. Has a bit of a very weird area, of course, though. 
Uh, I don't know about you, but this year has been absolutely rough. Uh, I've got my green Christmas jumper on now because, well, we're still in December, and um, obviously Christmas is not over yet, though. <laughs> Although, as I can say otherwise, we've already just passed Christmas, which is interesting. So I've got a cold here, but, um, lovely chimpanzees. And I've actually noticed that these guys have actually got a lot more darker eye colours, though, as I said before, though, than the five packs, though. And it's also very worth it to note that the, the variations of chimpanzees that I'm making is pretty hard, though. And I've got a funny feeling I didn't expect chimpanzees to be brown, because, well, we need the sort of colour that you would normally see a monkey or a chimpanzee to be in that sort of colour in cartoons and TV shows and films I believe though but um yeah the chimpanzee horde 12 pack and colour variations uh, product there looks very very nice though eh? 15 pounds no 5 looks very interesting <laughs> that was sloppy eh but anyways I'm just going to take a look at this product here next it is a Jarvan Sparrow uh, Wild Flock 12 pack, £15.50. Now, I've actually covered the 5 pack in uh, May of 2020, which was a while ago, and it was during the spring lockdown, which was a very different one, though. It's a flip flap origami flip. Oh my goodness me. Flapping Birds Pets toy. And there's the back of the packaging there. <laughs> wow. What is he saying? My wing's not re that real big, though. Well, obviously. Um, a Jarvan Sparrow never has wings like that. And, um, yes, I also just want to let you know that Jarvan Sparrows are actually, oh my goodness me, they're actually properly called as Java Sparrows without the N on it. That's very interesting, though. Eh? And what's quite interesting about these guys is that they're not related to other sparrow species, like, you know, the American Sparrows and the, um, the Old World Sparrows, which include, like, the, um, the House Sparrow and the Tree Sparrow and, um, Whatever spell, I don't know. Actually, hang on, what if I look at this image? That actually reminds me of the annoyed bird meme. <laughs> That's so weird, eh? I've never expected this guy to look like that. Okay, so in that pose, eh? Oh my goodness me, oh my god. This bird looks more like a puffin, though, than a finch or a, a sparrow, though. But, um, obviously, uh, sparrows and finches obviously have the same sort of bill. You know, these sort of bills are perfectly, you know, developed for um, crushing seeds and whatnot, maybe nuts of course. Lovely artwork on them, very nice indeed. I love their anthropomorphic sort of characteristics going here like that. Java Sparrow looks like he's looks like he's having a very bad day. That's why he's getting a lot more well angry in a sense too. And oh, oh my God, that's the same. Oh my God, that's just like this image here, because obviously that that drawing there is how 2020. It's supposed to feel like though, that annoyed bird there. <laughs> That's pretty much interesting though. I'm just going to go ahead and unpack this. And uh, I just also want to let you know that I've also got cuts and scars and wounds on my hand there because I must have been, well, washing my hands excessively though, and that's what's causing my skin to decay though, which is really nasty to hear though. Uh, but, anyways, let's take a look at the Java Sparrows. They look really, really nice. I've actually noticed this one here has actually got some sort of error here. This one here. Actually, oh my goodness me, actually, um, oh my goodness me, why am I talking lovely now? Um, obviously, one of the Jarvan Sparrows has got like a, oh, just say, a very rough colouring and sort of, detailing. you telling know, I think it was quite funny is that I actually forgot to add the detailing in black, which is meant to look like something that you'd normally see on Jarvan Sparrows. They, you know, I think a wild Java Sparrow would normally have, like, some sort of weird, um, I don't know, it's something that reminds me of what a gangster would wear. And uh, they sort of normally have head patches that look like that, obviously. Much better, eh? Much, much better indeed. And also, the other info I actually forgot is that they all have, um, poseable lower mandibles, as you can tell. And the mandible is basically the part of the beak, though. You've got the upper mandible which doesn't do anything, but this lower mandible here, you can just pose it to just look like it's tweeting or chirping or maybe talking. You might be thinking, wow, this could be a real cold timber. Uh, but anyways, uh, same detailing there. Uh, there's the name Jarvan Sparrow. Um, obviously, uh, these guys have been updated nicely with filtic pen detailings, except for these sections there. And the wings as well, though, except for 
this one here, the wing coverts, or is it the wing coverts, or I don't know. Not that really much though, but um, I'm still a person who is into ornithology, um, obviously though, but um, I'm still struggling with the names and how I would basically, um, how would you say, all parts, just name all parts of, you know, in terms of what parts does that bird have though, like, um, like it's got the beak, it's got the tail, it's got the feet, it's got the wings, I don't know. Anyways, they just look all the same here, and once again, these guys are endangered, and they're native to, well, Java, which is basically like the island of Indonesia, but they're also native to uh, Bali, which is where Denpasa is, which is like a small uh, island in Indonesia, which has got like one of the largest populations of Hindus there. And uh, what's the other island that um, where you can find this bird? I think it's called Bawen. Not sure if I could say that correctly though, but um, yeah, the Javan Sparrow looks really, really nice though. Really, really nice indeed though. I think I've definitely seen these before though, if I've made my YouTube channel though, which is nice to see. And um, yeah, they're also quite nice looking pets there as well though, to keep though, as a caged bird. Maybe not though. Uh, luckily, I've got all 12, and they literally detail them the same way as I did with that fire pack. And also just to let you know, they've also got the same beak detailing like that there, well, almost different or almost the same though because they've got pink on the top and they've got red at the bottom as well and also at the right section as well there, which is, you can see I'm saying right is saying the opposite left. Anyways, there's that product done here. Glad I'm doing tropical animals though, before the new year comes in though. Oh wow, this one here is called the Semi-Ballistic Black and White Ruffed Lima or 12 pack. £16.99, this product costs that, it's almost £17, as I can work out though. Lovely artwork on these um, lemurs though, uh, they look like foxes uh, crossed with a monkey though, which is interesting though. And once again these guys, like all lemurs, they're native to Madagascar, as always as I can tell, straightforward though. I'm just going to roll my sleeves though, because my sleeves are just getting over the way there, they're just taking over my duty, my civic duty, <laughs> and it's not. Okay, I'm just going to unpack this. Uh, I don't know what type of forest would these lemurs would live in. I would probably presume uh, tropical rainforest, but I might be totally wrong though. Because um, there are some lemurs that don't need tropical rainforest to, or basically, um, live in there. As part of their, their life, obviously though. Um, yeah, but I would say tropical rainforest is like the perfect habitat there, I believe though. Sadly, there's no licensing info on these um, guys though, but they have... Oh my goodness me, there's actually a Pokemon based on this creature. I think it's... I wonder what's the Pokemon's name called? Persimian, obviously though. Anyways, I'm just going to show you what these lemurs look like. They look like some sort of weird dog though. But um, yeah, obviously with that combination of that foxy look and that monkey-like design, it's very amazing though. Um, it's quite interesting. Lovely black and white detailings on these creatures though. Sadly they're critically endangered because of poaching, fur trade and deforestation and whatnot. Actually I did a paper mache of a lemur at uh, my college though. I think it was a ring-tailed lemur. That was really really nice though. I don't think I've got a photo of it yet but I might be totally wrong. But um, it was quite nice though doing that lemur day at the college though. It was pretty simple. Uh, but um, yeah, really really cool indeed though. Just like these guys here that I've just made recently though. And uh, what's very nice is, is that um, just before I've made this sort of product like this, uh, I've actually went to various places where you can actually see these guys. Uh, I've only actually been to a couple of places. Uh, the Nature Centre, right where Cannon Hill Park is, uh, in Birmingham though. Obviously I've seen these guys before though. Uh, twice actually though. And in Dudley Zoo. <laughs> How could I never forget Dudley Zoo because... Well, obviously there was a very weird exhibit with the lemurs and it's like that sort of place that uh, I'm surrounded by these guys, I feel like I'm going to get attacked because, well, lemurs have got sharp claws because, well, they use it for climbing trees, obviously, they, and they are, well, what would you call it as an arboreal animal. It's basically an animal that spends its time on the trees more so than, the, you know, in the ground or so, obviously, though. But I've seen ring-tailed lemurs uh, spend their time mostly on the ground, though, just to feed on insects and whatnot and stuff like that, though. But, like all lemurs, nevertheless, they are omnivores, which is nice to say indeed. 
And actually, whenever I think of the designs of a lemur like this, though, the black and white rough lemur, um, it's very interesting. I would normally expect to see something a lot more like a badger or a skunk or any other black and white animal, though, with any sort of colorizations here. Lovely yellow eyes, though. But, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure if it's a black and white animal, which is small and not as big as a zebra, I would probably call these animals as nocturnal, but maybe I might be totally wrong. Also, the muzzle is a lot more greyer than black, because look at the face, it looks like it's pretty much smiling in a very nice way, though, obviously. And uh, I'm just going to put these back, though, because, well, these guys, they are pretty much interesting to look at, though, and they're very charismatic-looking creatures, though, as well, though. Obviously, though, very, very weird indeed, though. Lovely-looking creatures, though, the lemurs, though. And uh, I've got a funny feeling... And, um, yeah, I'll probably say lemurs are pretty much one of the best tropical species of animals to look at, though, because, well, lemurs are endemic to Madagascar, and there's plenty of amounts of, of uh, rainforest in Madagascar, though, but I might be totally wrong, because, well, there are other habitats and biomes in Madagascar, like, you know, temperate areas and subtropical highland areas and, I don't know, also desert areas as well, though, it's also another thing that Madagascar also has got light as well. Also semi-arid areas, which are like a desert but not as dry as a desert though. But anyways, uh, there you go, let me just put them back there. And actually these guys are pretty much the same genus to its close relative, the red ruffled or red ruffed lemur. I don't know why I sometimes incorrectly um, name these guys ruffled though, because well, ruffed is the Correct name because, well, the reason why they're called black and white rough lemurs is because, well, these sections here on the neck are called the roughs. That one there, though, that very weird big, how'd you say, big piece of fur that surrounds on the neck of the animal, though. I think that's what's called the rough. And that's very nice of me describing it, though. Uh, anyways, that's that. Obviously, I want to make a part about the red rough lemur day because well it's obviously the um same creature as I oh my goodness me why am I speaking roughly there as the one I saw at WZ day back in August of twenty nineteen back when COVID wasn't around there. And mind you I was surrounded by a horde of lemurs that I almost got attacked. And they make these sort of weird barking like cause though like a very weird cross between a dog and a pig there, those sort of noises day. But um anyways let me just move on to something a lot more well, a lot more non tropical themes. We've got this one here, this is the Kelp Girl, um, what's this one called, Seashore, um, I don't know what that one's called though, I wonder what this is, that's very interesting, it's a Feeding Frenzy 12 pack, which is very interesting though, I can't remember what, what does that G mean say, is that Gary or is it, um, I can't really tell what that word is, that's it, oh I've got fireworks in the background because it's New Year's Eve though, but um, that's very, very nice though. It's really nice though. I think it's cool, cool though, I believe though. Let me just go ahead and take a look at the back of the packaging there. And I've got some very cool looking designs today. I've also got some seashells as well though, which looks very amazing now. I have no idea what that word is. Um, is it, um, gay? Oh, I can't, oh, sorry if I'm saying it. Gay? Let me try and write out what that word is. I've never heard. Um, such a very cool word, this is a, um, can't really tell though, is it, oh my goodness me though, I've no idea though, a seashore, go for it. oh my goodness, I'm not gonna find out what that word is though, but uh, I've no idea, I've no idea what it says there, I says the word gay though, gay feeding frenzy 12 pack, oh I see, it's meant to be a gay feeding frenzy 12 pack though, because, well, maybe, obviously, because of the fact that, well, obviously the seagulls are pretty much male in this set, though, but let's find out they are. Let me try and unpack this. Oh, we've also got a very nice in rendition of a third winter kelp girl, uh, which is interesting, though. Eh? Sorry, this video's gone a bit rough already, though, but anyways, there's that bird here. Does the same thing. No felt tip detailing because, well, it's meant to be a water toy. There you go, it's a third winter cup girl, it's got the same features as an adult, but more likely different though, right? And we've got a couple of these, um, 
Kelp Girls, which are pretty much... Are these adults? I think they're adults. Yep, it says Kelp Girl. Same, same. And this one here, though, is also the same as well, but this one's got a bit of a sooty sort of beak, though. But um, let's take a look at the juveniles, because they're quite enticing to look at, though. The juveniles here. Yeah, for the look. Really, really nice, though. And um, it's also the same thing as well, though. And also, notably, I've also noticed that the tower detailing is, instead of brown, it's also white. I didn't expect that to happen, though. Uh, I don't know if this is like a very weird design change or detailing change on the artwork of these birds, so it's not really the the packaging's artwork, but the model's um, overall appearance, so I don't know if it's changed, though. I don't know if it's a very uh, different sort of change, though, I believe, though, but anyways. Uh, we've got some fish here, which look very, very nice to look at, though. And just to let you know, we're also in lockdown as well, though, which is very sad to hear. We're in tier 4, so we can't do anything as normal as we want to, just like in the past, way before COVID was around, though. Uh, anyways, we've got some soldiers, though. We'll just take a look at the faces here. It's quite funny that the faces on these, they are obviously the same design of fishies, though. I wonder why they're designed after Wishy Washy from, well, freaking Pokemon, eh? Uh, there's the other one there. Okay, and there's that one there as well, though. I've got a funny feeling, I don't know how good or bad these guys are, uh, but they look very, very nice, eh? Uh, there's some very weird um, uh, seashells, which look very, very weird, though. Uh, to me, they look more like a navel shell, which I presume that they are. Very, very nice, though. It's like a cross between some sort of weird shrimp prawn krill thing mixed with a, a shell. That's it. That's just about it, hey? It almost looks like I'm just going to cook these and just put it in the barbecue and make them as part of my new shrimp in the barbie recipe. Oh, sorry, what was I saying? Oh, sorry, I was meant to say recipe, but now I've said recipe. Oh, what a bad word was that one, hey? It's meant to be recipe. Screw my words! Anyways, <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and just put that one away, though. Um, I don't know if I've got a sense of dyslexia obviously though and um, obviously I'm still suffering a bit of roughness though after I did that video with the train on it though uh, what was that train character from Tomash? Bill obviously and also the Ute as well though it was a very cool addition as well though that's that product done though last but by no means least hopefully I won't do any roughness too much though this is called the Red Wing Flop 12 pack <laughs> Obviously, it's just like that one. Eh? It's supposed to be called the Wintering Red Wing Flop Top Pack because, well, these guys are winter visitors in the UK. Rarely you ever see these guys as a breeder, though. They're more of a rooster, if you think about it, though. Ro rooster is in, not just a male chicken, obviously, though, but more of a bird that, that roosts during winter and doesn't breed or make eggs until the next spring or so. There you go, 15 pounds 50. Okay, that doesn't look too bad, eh, for a that one, eh? And this is also one toy view I actually forgot to review, because, um, obviously, this was made during my self-isolation time back in, uh, late November and early December, so I've actually forgot to review this product here. But anyways, there's the back of the packaging there. That looks very, very nice to see, though. And red wings have distinctive red colored flanks on the underwings. That obviously makes sense, though. It's also the s smallest thrush species in the UK as well, though, which is... Very, very nice though, it is all named simply as Red Wing. Very nice to hear, and therefore that looks very, very nice, and because it's called the Red Wing, it's got red wing flanks on its underside, and also the wings as well. Almost clearly, it looks like some sort of weird miniature song thrush, or missile thrush, whenever I think about it, of course, though. I don't know if I've seen these quite a lot, though, because, um, I don't know if these guys are declining in numbers, though. But, anyways... There they are, the red wings. How could you never love or hate about these birds, though? And if I pull their tails, they look like that, like so, eh? Really, really nice to see these guys, they just flapping like so. Well, maybe not, though. I think I've made a red wing product before, though, in 2018. I don't know if I've done that, but, um, it was nice, I suppose. It was also packed up in an envelope, which was the wrong type, though. It was like these sort of brown envelopes that you sort of end up with rips and you just open it and it's just it makes it all dilapidated and stuff like that but anyways here you go let's take a look at the 
red wings itself on the head there. I love the brown supercilian. I think it's basically the line that is on the head of the bird there, which goes next to the eye or or between the eye there, as you see there, or the eye is literally in between the two lines there of the supercilian, but um, looks nice though. Love the um, brown stripe detailing on the underside of this bird though. Obviously, it looks nice. They've got pink feet, and they've also got a very interesting color combination. There's a grayish, yellowish, beakish color there. I've never seen other birds like that one before though. But these guys look very nice. I have to say, though, I believe they. I don't know which brush species is common. Is it the field fair or is it the red wing? Please tell me because I've no idea which thrush species is the most common though. Obviously. Uh, but I've got to tell you what, uh, 2020 has been such a very hard year for me though, not just for all you YouTubers and for me, but also for the fact that yes, 2020 was a year that I just feel like, well, like all of you guys and girls, ladies and gentlemen watching this, obviously it's been a very hard year because we couldn't do all the things that we can tour around. Like going on to freaking nature reserves, just doing freaking bird watching! Anyways, um, <laughs> that's just about it in this video, eh? But uh, anyways, I got a funny feeling that, um, yeah, it wasn't that bad overall for a video like this. And I, I gotta tell you what, it's been absolutely nice. And also, just to uh, check before I could actually pack all the red wings here, there's the name here. Before you start to get really, really angry and cranky at the same time. There you go, there's the other bird there. Got two of them, same red wings. I've checked all birds, they've all got names. And luckily enough for me, hey, they all look really, really nice. Apart from the fact that... Well, obviously, most of the detailing is from pencil instead of, well, instead of the domination of being dominated from felt tip pen detailing, obviously, yeah, but anyways, that's this product done, and I'm just glad, oh, sorry, <laughs> that I'm literally just done for the, oh my goodness me, throughout the rest of this whole entire year of nothing but COVID, and i got to tell you what, this year has been nothing but a nightmare, okay, but, um, I've no idea, but I'm just over it, over 2020, because I can tell you what, it's been such a travesty. And yes, it has caused so much outrage for the fact that COVID-19 was one thing that we didn't know. Well, what can you say? It was one thing that we didn't know about, though, because um, obviously it's a virus that has a huge mysterious story that is still ongoing, and we don't know. Well... Obviously, I know it's a Chinese virus because, well, it came from Wuhan and all that stuff. But uh, I've got to tell you what, I could just got a funny feeling that, although it doesn't sound really funny, but I could tell you what, that many of the people in the government are most recalcitrant when it comes to the COVID-19. Okay, so it's been really, really difficult there. Anyways, if you are celebrating this new year, 2021, uh, I will be making videos though, and it's quite funny that... Well, what can you say that I've just placed the pencil back though to the box there, I believe there. And I've got a funny feeling, uh, I don't think 2021 would obviously be the same day for me though, because, well, we're stuck in COVID 19 times. And I've got to tell you what, there's not much going around this year other than the fact that we've got a, a new lockdown for the fact that we're in tier 4 there. I've got to tell you what, it's been hard but um yeah such a very tough year though for me though because well obviously during quarantine of spring of 2020 uh, i was literally tested positive for covid19 and i had to self-isolate for an agonizing duration of two weeks because well if i did pass the virus by going away from my room and not whatnot though well i could have killed myself and killed some people as well though in fact dwarves the rest of humanity as well are going to be dead from this very mysterious virus that we all wanted to die okay so anyways i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you have a very happy christmas sir a very merry christmas of course though and a happy new year as well though that's what i was about to say a very happy new year though although you might start to feel like oh oh sorry i just did a flash in today uh, anyways i'm just going to give you this video just please give this video a good like like so and just subscribe to my YouTube channel because, well, just because you can't subscribe to my YouTube channel doesn't mean there'll be more content, <laughs> obviously. Um, anyways, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a very happy new year for 2021 and bye for now.